There's no question that Red Bull has thrust itself to the very front of the F1 grid in recent races, but how has it done it? To help me explain that, I've got Jake Boxleg and Scott Mitchell here. Scott, before we get to explaining what's actually a very small technical change, how big has the step been in recent races for Red Bull? I think the two ways to measure it are results and just outright pace. So we've seen a big shift in Red Bull's results over the last four races because Max Verstappen has won two of them. <laughs> and he had pole in Hungary and should have been on the podium at a very power-sensitive power circuit at Silverstone. So that's a, that's a huge thing because in the first eight races or so, Max had a couple of podiums. OK, should have been second in Monaco. And then the rest were pretty much all fourth place finishes and, and I think one fifth place. And then if you go beyond that and look at right why were those results so different, it's, there's been a dramatic shift in outright pace. Uh, our favourite method is the super time, um, which I think was something that Gary Anderson coined. You, you take the fastest lap from every team from a given weekend, express it as a percentage of the outright pace, and that gives you your super time. So over the first eight races or so, uh, Red Bull was about 0.9% off the pace, which is quite a lot. And then all of a sudden, from Austria onwards, that goes down massively to 0.2, 0.3%. So all of a sudden they're in the game because Red Bull's forte, Honda's forte, is not one lap pace, it's race performance. So the fact that they've become so much more competitive over one lap has, has put them much closer, much more in the mix in qualifying, and then they just make an even bigger step on, on, on Sundays. Let's get on to the change then, JBL. As I mentioned, it's, it's a very small one, and now it's your job to explain to people why it's made all the difference. What you can see is the curvature in the main plane has changed. Um, so they've brought the highest point further inward. Um, so this is what they had in Spain, and this is what they originally brought to Austria. This is a fit they've just taken in Hungary. But yeah, they've moved that highest point inwards. Um, and what they've done is they've kind of changed the philosophy of the wing um, to something that's a little bit closer to, if it looks nothing like it, but a little bit closer to the Ferrari Alpha kind of concept of using the inboard section to generate the majority of the downforce and then using the outboard section to turn airflow around the front of the tyre. You can kind of see that in the approach they've taken to redefining the curvature in the wing. You can see the purple line on the top as well. Um, it's a lot more shallow at the outboard section now compared to what it was before. So. It is that shift in philosophy. When Red Bull first, you know, got, had gone through the first few rounds, realised perhaps the balance of the car wasn't what it needed to be, and so they looked at the car holistically, did an aerodynamic study of it, and gone, okay, we need this, this, and this to ensure that we have the right balance. And so they'll go away, come up with a batch of front wings in in CAD, bung it through CFD, and they'll go through this iterative process of finding which wing creates the right pressure distributions, the right downforce, the right vortices, that kind of thing. That's kind of the process they've gone through. Obviously, they've come up with this, and it, it seems to have done the trick. So full, full credit to them. Now, normally, when we talk about transformative upgrade packages, we're thinking lots of new parts, big visible differences. What does a change like this and the difference it's made tell us about sort of modern F1 aerodynamics? It's, it's so highly strung now. Obviously, the front wing is the most important part of the car, and whatever you do to that, that's going to affect everything further downstream. But people associate big gains with big update packages. That's not always true, because if you get one thing right and one thing wrong, your net and your net performance has either gone up or down. You don't know what's worked and what hasn't. Red Bull has decided they now understand the car and understand what it needs, and making this tiny, tiny little tweak to the front wing, that's just given them everything they need. So, yeah, as I say, it's very highly strung. Uh, it's a bit of a, still a bit of a black art, but they seem to have found the, found the solution. It's validated something that Max Verstappen said, I think it was sort of France time, maybe just before France, where he said he, he genuinely felt that there wasn't really much that was really needed from the Red Bull Honda package. He said a little bit more from the car, a little bit more from the engine, and he was like, I, I think it will transform the picture at, at the front. And when someone says that, you sort of think, oh, well, yeah, but how much is a little bit? And then you have a change like this, and, and what this has done from the driver's point of view, and say driver singular, because <laughs> it really has only been one driver at Red Bull that has unlocked it, is Max has reported a car that 
in his words, came alive in, in Austria and, 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 and again in Germany and was really competitive at Silverstone as well. He feels it's a car that's just basically given him more confidence. It's now just a, it's built more predictable. He can be more aggressive with it because he knows that he's going to handle it. It's not going to throw it into a corner and then the back's going to step out. He doesn't need to combat that with adding more and more wing levels, which then obviously comes at the, the cost of an even bigger straight line speed deficit. So the package as a whole just works with, with fewer compromises. And when you align that with Honda, introducing another th small thing that changed in Austria um, that we didn't know about was H Honda actually looked at the data from Canada and France, two hot races, and introduced an unknown countermeasure but ahead of Austria, which allowed them to run the engine harder in, a, in hot conditions. And then once they'd done that, they saw the validation of, oh, well, we can run this engine much more aggressively and it doesn't blow up. So all of a sudden, you've got a car that's doing what the driver wants slightly better, so they're getting a little bit more from the car, an engine that they're not afraid to run a little bit harder, and it all adds up, and suddenly you've got a, a, a car that was constantly 4-4, 5th, and sniping for podiums to suddenly being in outright wing contention.